As a radio talk show host, Iman Rapetli is in dialogue with her listeners every working day. And as a journalist, she's covered thousands of stories locally and abroad. Despite this, we didn't know much about her backstory until she published her autobiography recently. Kriya met up with Iman to find out more about the personality behind the microphone and the author behind the book. When Iman Rapetti launched her autobiography, readers were rewarded with a book filled with fascinating observations, entertaining anecdotes and poignant insights, which, as the title suggests, she has woven into a story of personal transformation. Born Vanessa Lina Rapetti, she took the name Iman when she converted to Islam at the time of her marriage. But this was just one of many ways in which she has made changes in her life, while still remaining true to her core values and inner identity. Good morning to you, my beloved power family. When the wind is angry, the dandelions are the first casualties. Their fragile, puffy halos put up a futile fight against the force. Those who believe in fairy tales and magic make wishes on the feathery explosion. South Africa has an ever-changing news environment, and when it comes to reporting on it, you always have to be on top of your game. Today we get to spend time with an amazing woman who is not only a radio presenter, a television presenter, a journalist, a businesswoman, but also now a published author. Iman, how Hi. are you? Yeah. I'm good, and you? Good, thank you. So where did it all begin for you? I, I think like with most things in my life, I kind of stumbled into it quite by chance. But the owner of the station, given him curry, had approached me and said, this is a place we feel you belong. I was terrified. The radio is an incredibly intimate thing. It takes a risk for people, wherever they are in South African society, to pick up the phone and tell you what they can't tell other people in their lives. Kriya, stand by for me. Let me just say goodbye to my listeners really quickly. And that's where we leave it for today. I want to thank uh, my team, Banyana Bongani. You guys are the ultimate partners. It's you, our listener, that always matters the most. I love you. I'll see you tomorrow. Is this so amazing? What goes into actually creating a show? It's always great to have a really nice production team who listens. You have to be very mindful of the news developments, but also about the things that become really big talking points for us as South Africans. To be able to excavate the layers and to bring us all onto the same page of understanding. What do you love about radio? What makes it so special? Radio is the theatre of the mind. And that to me is something so exciting, to be able to conjure up images, to be able to slow things down and pace things up again, to be able to play with this whole choreography where it's about information, it's about news, it's about experiences, it is about living in a lesson. It's just all of these unpredictable dynamics that I think make it so special. What advice would you give to young South Africans that want to get involved in talk radio? Just start. I was doing radio from the time I was an intern. I was working at Capital Radio, I was on the beach then. I was doing horrible jobs like cleaning out the reels and demagnetizing them. But it really instilled a kind of love and appreciation for the discipline that it takes to produce good radio. You don't just come behind a microphone and talk a whole lot of rubbish. Another thing I know that you absolutely love is cooking. And I heard that you make the best soji. Here they say the proof of the pudding is in the eating. So I'm going to take you home with me, or as we say in Durban, come on, let's go. <laughs> Iman's family was enjoying some together time when Kriya arrived and the kitchen was ready for soji making. Kriya, welcome to my house. Thank you so much. Now I'm going to demonstrate the soji. I can actually make soji. But first, I think, take me back. Where did it all begin for you? Because you were originally from Phoenix. It was an interesting place because people from all over came to settle there. Living so close to each other, you're forced into a situation which engendered a very particular kind of community. It was actually quite beautiful. What makes it so special? In our communities, everyone was almost aware of the problems in different homes because the women would talk or the men would talk. Mm -hmm. And in an afternoon, you could get a kid come over and ask your mother for an onion or ask for a, a potato, sugar, sugar, sugar whatever. whatever. And they knew that they were okay to do that, they wouldn't be turned away. I can't go next door to my neighbor's house and say, uh, Uncle, you got one tin fish. <laughs> I can't do that. And so that community spirit of we share what we have and that your problems somehow are problems that I can relate to and I can share brought us really closely together in, in a very unique and special way. Shall we get started with this? You ready, girl? Let's do this. Stove on. <laughs> All right, so we're going to start with butter. 100% butter, baby. Tell me a little bit about growing up. Your mom, your dad, your family. So my dad was a first-generation South African. His parents came over on the last boat 
They came to South Africa with indentured labor, and they managed to carve out a life and a fortune for themselves. In Pantons Hill, they were running this fresh produce empire. But then in comes my mom, who is a colored woman, and I use the word specifically here. Now you can imagine that didn't sit very well with my amma, a woman who was expecting their son to kind of marry within the Telugu community and so on. So it, it was, um, you know, it was quite a big spoke in the wheels early in their lives. And then we're going to throw in the semolina. You want to have it fry along with the butter. So semolina is bubbling nicely away there. And then we're going to add some cardamom pods. It's better to bruise them because then I think they're kind of more open and ready for the process. And then I'm going to put in some flaked almonds. And then we're going to add the sugar. I say the more the better, just like my grandmother. You can never have too much butter or too much sugar. And then I'm going to throw in some cinnamon. In goes the milk. And what you want to do is you literally just want to cover it like that. Oh, and then the best part, put some cream in there. Oh, it looks good. Yeah, I'm giving away all my special secrets just for you, my darling. So it's now from here on, it's just stirring. It's almost like risotto. You have to keep at it. You have to love it throughout the process. Having an Indian father and a colored mum, that must have been quite an interesting dynamic. In hindsight, you can say you get the best of a variety of worlds. You get the tradition and the cuisine of my Indian side. You get the history and the other kind of cultural diversity that's brought in from my mixed side. But there were very clear racial lines. And it was very interesting watching these two worlds collide because here I was a product of both these worlds. And there were so many prospects for harmony. But the one thing that was missing was recalibrating the psyche of equalness in a context of great inequality during apartheid. Why did you decide to then go into journalism? I always wanted to be a human rights lawyer. You know, like most families, you don't have the money. I remember I went to go and ask my mom if I can go and study at university and she was busy shining the floor. And she's like, <laughs> are you gonna go? <laughs> Basically laughing at me. But we made a plan, bank loans and whatever, and ultimately I ended up in journalism because it was a cheaper option at tech. But I'm glad, I'm glad it turned out like that. It was a happy accident. Mm -hmm. Kriya, the soji is ready. I'm going to take it to the table. You bring the tea. Perfect. So after you studied journalism, you then decided to spend two years in Iran. I really wanted to go to that country. All I was navigating by at the time was religion. And I wanted to immerse myself in it totally. I mean, we gave away everything that we had, all our worldly possessions. We wanted to live as simply as possible. On the journey to Iran, I just found out that I was pregnant with my first child, Mohammed. You then took the journey to come back to South Africa. Coming back to South Africa was interesting. We'd been large and in charge in Iran. We were working at the state broadcaster, earning really well, living a nice life in Tehran. And coming back to where our savings are depleted, I'm about to have this baby, I'm unemployed, and I find myself in a polygamous marriage that I, I, I didn't know about. So there was a lot to deal with. And fortunately, after about a year of utter struggle, I found my way back into journalism. What were some of your standout moments through your journey? The best moments are ones with, with people who open up their hearts to you. I share a couple of stories in my book about people who are suffering in war-torn countries or people that I've come across in my work. When you're holding hands with a mother who's lost a children in a shack fire and you're wanting to be able to tell the story because it means that politically there could be some help deployed. What it's like to be in her shoes. Th those are the things I remember the most. Your book, tell me a little bit about it. I'm just hoping that having written my story, that maybe there'd be resonance for other people, even in the midst of suffering and even in the midst of change. Your prospects of emerging at the other side stronger, if those prospects are high, and they were high for me, then maybe in someone else's experience where they're perhaps feeling very low, and thinking, you know, it's the end, that they, they would take courage from that. Thank you so much for spending time with me here at Mela, but I want some soju before I go, please. A dish there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you like it. I think it smells great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is very good. 